Interscaling block is commonly used for shoulder surgery. It's used for surgery of the proximal humerus, the acromioclavicular joint, and typically we do it at the level of C6. Uh, we're blocking here the brachial plexus at the level of the roots, and commonly the most, the most common nerve to miss is T1, uh, which is the ulnar nerve distribution. And now we're gonna show you a scan on an actual uh, person of what it will look like under ultrasound guidance. When we look at the anatomy of the inner scaling groove, we know that it's located between the anterior and middle scaling muscles. You can have the patient lift their head up off the bed and palpate along the posterior border of their sternocleidomastoid. You can relax your head now. We typically do this block at the level of the C6 cricoid cartilage, and once you slide your fingers back behind, you should feel the groove between the anterior and middle scaling muscles. Once we have identified that place, we can put our ultrasound probe and we should see right in the middle of where we're looking. So we can see on the left of the screen um, the carotid and the inter and as we slide a bit more lateral, we can see the brachial plexus. And we can see here the anterior scalene, the anterior scalene muscle, the middle scalene muscle, and the nerve roots. This is likely C5, C6, C7, and C8 and T1 are down here. For inner scaling blocks, 100% of the time we have unilateral blockade of the phrenic nerve, which is why it's contraindicated to do bilateral inner scaling blocks, which could lead to bilateral phrenic nerve paralysis and failure of the diaphragm. Side effects from an inner scaling block, there are many. One can be hoarseness from um, a blockade of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. You can also have a Horner syndrome, which is characterized by ptosis, anhydrosis, and meiosis, which is spread of the local anesthetic to the cervical sympathetic chain. Other things to note that can happen from an inner scaling block, um, you can have spread when we look at the anatomy. We know that they're vascular structures, so we can have an inadvertent um, intravascular injection, which can uh, progress to local anesthetic toxicity and seizures. Um, and in the worst case scenarios, lead to cardiac implications. Uh, we can also have accidental intrathecal or epidural injections. Uh, that would involve the needle being much uh, farther than we would want it to. And you can see on our model, who has very nice anatomy, uh, that her brachial plexus starts about at one centimeter. So it's really a block that is not very deep in terms of where our needle should be. Other things to note is sometimes we do an interscaling block in conjunction with the nerve stimulator. If we're doing it under that technique and we get a twitch of the diaphragm, we know that our needle is too anterior and need to move our needle more posterior. If we get a trapezius twitch, which is back here, then we need to move our needle a little more anterior to be closer to the anterior scaling muscles.